Okay, so today we're gonna cover section four from chapter three. So today what we're going to be doing is finding the zeros of the polynomial function. In order to find the zeros, we're gonna use what we learned on Friday um, before Thanksgiving break began. And we're gonna be using this factor theorem. And when we use the factor theorem is we're gonna be doing a synthetic division with a factor. If when we do the synthetic division problem, if we end up with a remainder of zero, then we know that that divisor, the number we're dividing by, is actually a factor of the polynomial. So we're gonna just review the first few examples or exactly what we did before. You're given one of the zeros or one of the factors. Just pay attention to how the information in the problem is presented to you. So for number one, they're asking us to factor this polynomial. And they're telling us that x equals three, this is one of our zeros. So written as a factor, this was actually x plus three. Because remember, when you solve x plus three as a factor, you would subtract three and that's how you get x equals negative three. Now, when the information given to you is presented as an x equals, then this is the exact number we're gonna use in our synthetic division. However, if it's presented you, to you like number two, this is actually the factor itself, and again, to figure out what number you're gonna use in your synthetic division, you set it equal to zero, and the number I'm using here is gonna be x equals one. Okay, so let's go ahead and go back to number one and let's go ahead and do that problem. Okay, so here we're going to use negative three. I'm gonna write all of the coefficients of my polynomial in my synthetic division box, including the constant and now I'm gonna do my synthetic division problem. I drop down the first term. Remember, you're going to multiply, and this gives me negative 18. I then write the, I add the column, I get positive one. I multiply again, negative three times one, and I get negative three, add the column, I get negative one, multiply one last time, negative three and negative one, gives me positive three, add the column, and I get a remainder of zero. If they started out by telling you that this was a factor and you did not get a zero here, then you've done something wrong and you should probably go back and refigure it out. Now, if you're not certain that negative three was a factor, then potentially you could get a number here that's not a zero. And then you would have to try another factor. And that's gonna come later on in the notes. Now, let me go ahead and add back my variables. So again, remember this is the remainder, the constant, the x term, and the x squared term. So now this equation or function is now six x squared plus x minus one equals zero. The whole uh, purpose for here, um, for doing this technique, is to get my polynomial down to a quadratic equation that I could now factor. So now, this is actually factorable. I could factor this quadratic equation. Now, if it said to find the zeros, then I could also use the quadratic formula if you don't like to factor. However, factoring is actually the faster way to solve this problem. So let me go over here to the side so I have some more room to work. So I'm gonna rewrite what I just got, the six x squared plus x minus one equals zero. I'm going to factor this using the guess and test method the factors of six x squared, I'm gonna, it's either one and six or two and three. I'm gonna use the two and the three. So two x and three x gives me six x squared. And then my factors of negative one are gonna be negative one, positive one. 
Now, when you go to place them into your binomials, um, if you're guessing and testing, when you place them in here, you now must FOIL this to double check that it does go back. Because maybe you put the, the negative signs in the wrong spot. Or maybe it wasn't even the factors of two and three. Maybe it's six and one. So let's quick double check that this does indeed go back to the six x squared plus x minus one. Inside gives me negative two x and last negative one. Six x squared plus x minus one. It does go back. So these are the correct factors. So the answer to this problem is going to be the one that they originally gave me, the x plus three, and now these two. These are the factors of this polynomial. Now, if it says to find the zeros, then we need to take this one step further. And what I would do is take each one of these set them equal to zero, and this is going to be the zeros of my function. Remember the zeros are also called solutions, and they're also the x-intercepts. Divide by three, and x equals one-third, and then here subtract one, one-half, and x equals negative one half. So my three zeros are negative three, one third, and negative one half. When you're entering the zeros into WebAssign, enter them as fractions. You don't have to put the x equals, you're just gonna put the numbers and you're gonna separate them with commas. But if it says to list the factors, then you would list, type in this. Let's try the next one. Again, they're giving me one of the factors. Again, when it's given to you in factored form, we needed to do this to it to figure out what number we're using in our synthetic division problem. And I'm using positive one. So let me come down here where I have plenty of room. So I'm using one. I'm gonna take all the coefficients, the two, the negative three, the negative five, and then the constant, which is six. And now I'm going to do the division. Bring down the first term, multiply, add the first column, or this column, and then multiply, add the column, multiply, add the column. Again, I got a remainder of zero, which I already knew because they told me this was a factor. So now I take and add in my variable, add my x's back in. So 2x squared minus x minus six equals zero. I now need to factor this trinomial. Factors of two, x squared, are gonna be two times one x, two x times one x. And then I'm gonna look for the factors of negative six. Now, it could either be one and six or two and three. It's actually going to be positive two and negative three. No, positive three and negative two. Again, I highly recommend you FOIL it because let's say you use six and one, it would not work. So now, the question asks you to list the factors. So the factors are going to be x minus one, two x plus three, and x minus two. These are the factors. To find the zeros, or the x-intercepts, you're going to set each one equal to zero, solve each one for x, so I will add one here, my first zero is at positive one. My next zero is going to be at negative one half or negative three over two. Now on WebAssign, I believe it's asking you to leave it as negative three over two and then add two 
and x equals positive 2. These are your three zeros. Notice I was looking for three answers because my original power here, when it was written from greatest power to the least, was x to the third, so that's a clue that it's going to hit my x-axis three times. Now, we are going to see coming up, um, when we start graphing them, that we could actually get one of the zeros to occur twice, and that's going to look like a bounce or a touch and turn. Um, and we're going to see this coming up when we talk about the behavior that our graph takes on. Let's try example three. Still the same thing. They're giving us one of the zeros, so I'm going to do synthetic division with that zero, break it down to quadratic, factor it, get the factors, set the factors equal to zero, and then solve. So let's try example three. So again, they gave me one of the zeros. So my factor is actually opposite sign, x plus 5. This is the factor when we turn the zero back in. So now let's go ahead and do the synthetic division, negative 5. Take all of the coefficients. And let's go ahead and bring down the first term. Let's multiply. So this and this gives me negative 30. I'm going to add the column. I get negative 13. Then I'm going to multiply negative 5 with the negative 13, which gives me positive 65. That's not really showing up very well. And then I'll add that column and get positive 2. And then I'll multiply negative 5 with positive 2, which gives me negative 10. Add the column, remainder of 0. Add back in the remainder constant x, x squared. So now I have 6x squared minus 13x minus 2 equals 0, plus 2, sorry. Plus 2 equals 0. So now I need to factor this. So again, factors of 6x squared can be 6 and 1. Factors of the positive 2 have to be the same sign, and it's going to take on the sign of the middle, and that's going to be negative 1, negative 2. Again, Foil this. If it doesn't give you the negative 13 in the middle, then you've done something wrong, but it works. So again, we can take the original factor they gave us, and these are the three factors of this polynomial. Again, if they want the zeros, take it one step further, set each one equal to zero, and solve for x. Add 1, divide by 6. The first 0 occurs at 1 sixth. Over here, I've got another at positive 2. And then the last one is the one they gave me, the negative 5. Now, if you were to key this into a graphing utility, these are the three places that our graph touches the x-axis. Now, the next part is to find possible roots. From here on out, examples 4 through 8, you're not given this information. You're going to have to guess and test. So let me go ahead and show you how we're going to find the possible zeros. So when we try to find the possible roots, we're going to first make sure our polynomial is in order of de decreasing degree. And that's how all of our examples have been. It's from the highest exponent down to the constant. 
to find a list of the possible roots, we are going to take all of the factors of the last term and then put them on top of all the factors of the first term. So after that, we're gonna make combinations and I'm gonna show you how we're gonna get the list of possible zeros. On WebAssign, it's going to ask you to key in all of the possible zeros. When I list them in the notes today, I'm gonna to put a plus minus in front, but WebAssign will expect you to enter them individually. And I'll show you what I mean by that. So let's see this in action, what it actually means. So notice they gave us a polynomial. They're asking us to find all of the zeros. They're not asking me to factor it, just find the zeros. However, once I break it down to quadratic, if I can factor it, that's the method I will use because it's faster, but you could use quadratic formula. Now, we don't know what any of the zeros are, so the first thing we need to do is list the possible zeros first using the example they showed us on the previous slide. So for my possible zeros, this is how I'm gonna set it up. So for possible zeros, we are going to find the factors of the last number and put them on top of the factors of the first number in our polynomial. So in this particular problem above, my last number is that constant 15. The factors of 15 are one, and, one times 15 and three times five. And notice in front on the previous slide, it had a plus minus in front. So plus and minus one, plus and minus three, plus and minus five, and plus and minus 15. These are all the factors of 15. I'm gonna do the same thing for the first term, which is the number eight. The ways to multiply to get an eight are one times eight and two times four. So one, two, four, and eight. Now, in WebAssign, you're going to be keying in the list of all the possible zeros. And what we're going to do is take this fraction and turn them into individual numbers. So what I'm gonna do first is I start with the number one that's here in the top in the numerator. I'm going to take this one and put a one in the denominator, a two, a four, and then the eight. So my possible zeros are gonna be plus and minus one, because one over one is one, one over the two is one half, one over the four is one fourth, and one over the eight is one eighth. Now I repeat the same process using the three. Put a one in the denominator, a two, a four, and then the eight. So now I have plus and minus three, because three over one is three, plus and minus three over two, plus and minus three over four, and plus and minus three over eight. I'm now gonna do the same thing with the five. And I'm gonna put the five over the one, the two, the four, and the eight. So now I have plus and minus five, plus and minus five over two, plus and minus five over four, plus and minus five over eight. And lastly, I'll do the same thing with the 15. 15 over one gives me plus and minus 15. Then the 15 over the two, the four and the eight. So plus and minus 15 over two, plus and minus 15 over four, plus and minus 15 over eight. Wow, we have 32 numbers we need to check to see which of these 32, three of them are gonna work. Now, when we used to do this in class, we would give you a question like this, you would not be using a graphing utility, 
However, we would not give you a question with this many possible zeros because I'm not going to expect you to do 32 different synthetic division problems until you find the one that gives you a remainder of zero. So more than likely, we would give you something that would have probably less than 10 possible zeros. And again, you would guess and test. And you would do synthetic divisions with one of these numbers until you find one that gets a remainder of zero. Once you find that answer, then you'll do another synthetic division with the answer you just got and keep going until you can get it to quadratic. Now, what I'm going to do, because there are so many ze possible zeros here, I'm actually going to go to my graphing utility and I'm going to be using Desmos and I'm going to key this function into my equation or into my graphing calculator and I'm going to find where it actually hits. Okay, now when you're doing this web assign homework, if you use a graphing utility to get the zeros, you still must show all the synthetic division and all the factoring necessary to get those zeros. Because I know you can key this in and Desmos is going to tell me the answer, but I want to see the work behind it. When you're doing this on WebAssign, it'll be a multi-part question. The first question, the first part of the question is going to list, ask you to list all the possible zeros. You're not going to do this stuff where I circled everything. The answer you're going to be keying in would be all of this here. But again, you can't enter it as a plus minus. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to enter it as negative one comma positive one, negative one half comma positive one half. You have to enter them individually and you would list all 32 or however many there are. So let me go ahead and go to Desmos and let me go ahead and key this function into Desmos and see which three out of this long list are actually the answers. Okay, so I keyed it into my graphing utility. Now on WebAssign, if it just asks you to find all the zeros, you're just gonna key in negative five comma and then you could put negative three over two comma one fourth it's going to expect you to enter them as fractions so up here in my possible list the ones that worked again you can find them here the ones that worked are right here the negative five the one fourth and then the negative three over two. So out of this list of 32, these are the three that worked. Now, what I wanna see in your work that's gonna back up the homework, instead of expecting you to go through this list and do a whole bunch of failed synthetic division problems, key it into your graphing utility, get a zero, and do a synthetic division with one of them. You can either choose to do the negative five, the negative three over two, or the positive one fourth. So this is the work I want to see to back up your homework. So now that we found them from this graph, I'm gonna do the negative five. I could do either of these, it doesn't matter. So now I'm gonna do synthetic division. I'm gonna write in my coefficients, the eight, the 50, the 47 and the negative 15. I'm gonna bring down the first coefficient. I'm gonna multiply and I get negative 40. I'm gonna add the column and I get 10. I'm gonna multiply again and I get negative 50. I'm gonna add the column, I get negative three going to multiply again and I get positive 15. I add the column, I get remainder of zero. Now I knew I was going to get a remainder of zero because I got it from the graph. But let's say we were not allowed to use a graphing utility and let's say you did synthetic division and this number was a one. This remainder would not be a zero. 
and then you'd have to try another number. And you would keep doing that however many times it would take you until you found the one that give you a remainder of zero. By using the graphing utility, it's gonna take away all those failed attempts because we already know what the answer is. Now, the next step is to either factor this or use quadratic formula. It's not asking us to list factors, it's only asking us to list the zeros. So I'm gonna take my now quadratic equation because this is remainder, constant, x, and x squared. So 8x squared plus 10x minus three. And again, you can either choose to do quadratic formula here or um, factor it. I'm gonna factor it because factoring's faster. This is actually factorable. So I can factor eight. I'm gonna factor it into four and two. And then I'm gonna factor the three into one and three. So negative one, positive three. Because it's asking me to list the zeros, I now have to take the 4x minus 1, set it equal to 0, 2x plus 3, set it equal to 0. Add 1, 4x equals 1, divide by 4, and x equals 1 fourth. Over here, subtract 3, 2x equals negative 3, divide by 2, and x equals negative three over two. Don't forget about the first answer that you did your synthetic division with. These are your three zeros for this answer. Everybody good? Let's try the next one. So even though Desmos gave us all of these, I wanna see this work in order to give you full credit for the WebAssign homework. Let's try number five. So let me come down here and six X, I'm just gonna rewrite the problem on number five, six X to the fourth plus seven X cubed minus 12 X squared minus three X plus two. So again, I'm gonna list my possible zeros first. And again, remember factors of the last term. My last term is two, so it only has one times two. And then factors of my first term, which is six. So one times six and two times three. So this is how I'm gonna set it up to get my actual list of possible zeros. Again, you will take this numerator, the one, and give it each one of these as a denominator. So my possible zeros are plus and minus one. One over one is one. One over two, one over the three, and then one over the sixth. I need to do the same thing with the two. So two over one will give me plus and minus two. Two over two gives me one. I've already listed it. I don't need to list it again. And then the two over the three, and that'll give me plus and minus two thirds. And then when I list the, the two over the six, this is gonna give me one third. I've already listed it, so I don't need to list it again. So this one's a little bit more reasonable. It only has 12 possible zeros. So if you were not using a graphing utility, um, granted, and notice the leading coefficient here, this leading term has an exponent of four. Actually, four of these numbers that are listed here are gonna be answers. So let's go ahead and go back to Desmos. Let's figure out which of these 12 are the answers but then what we're gonna need to do is two synthetic division problems before we can break it down to quadratic. So let's key it in to Desmos. 
Okay, so now I've done my synthetic division using one of the zeros, and it's this one over here that I got from Desmos. Again, when you do it, you should be getting a remainder of zero. If you don't, go back and do something wrong if you're certain that this was the correct equation that you keyed in. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm still trying to get this to quadratic. Right now, let me put the variables back. Remainder, constant, x, x squared, x cubed. So 6x cubed plus 3x squared plus x minus two equals zero. Now, if at this step right here, if this um, or something that you could factor, this is a 13. If I could factor this by grouping, I would do that. But I can't factor this by grouping, so I'm gonna do one more synthetic division. And now what I'm gonna do, I've already used the one, now I'm gonna pick another one, so remember these are the zeros. I have the negative two, I have the negative one half, the positive one third, and the positive one. I've already done this one. So now I need to do another synthetic division using now this bottom row here, the six, the 13, the one, and the negative two, using one of these three numbers. For me, the easier one is gonna be the negative two. If you don't mind working with fractions, you can use that. So let's go ahead and multiply. Well, first we'll bring down Let's go ahead and multiply, and I get, and why did I write a two there? That should be a six. So this is a six, write it in black. So I'm gonna multiply, I get negative 12. I'm gonna add the column, I'm gonna multiply again, and I get negative two. I'm gonna add the column, I get negative one, gonna multiply again and I get positive 2 add the column again I knew that was an answer so again if I'm not getting remainder of 0 I've done something wrong now let me go ahead and ba add back in my variables remainder constant x x squared now I have a quadratic equation that I can either factor or use quadratic formula to find the last zero. So this is factorable. My factor is a six, I'm gonna use three and two. And my factors of one are gonna be positive one, negative one. Again, if you're guessing and testing, foil this, make sure it does go back. It does. So now let me go ahead and solve each of these to get that last remaining zero, those last two. So I'll add one, three x equals one, divide by three, and x equals one third. Over here, subtract one, and two, divide by two, and x equals negative half. So in WebAssign, you're gonna key in negative two comma negative one half positive one third and positive one so it'll have multiple parts the first part is probably going to ask you to list the possible zeros then it's going to actually ask you to list the zeros now in the web assign it has different uh i guess criteria of keying in zeros if the question said to list the rational zeros these are rational however let's say this quadratic couldn't be factored and i had to do quadratic formula which is actually going to be example number six which i'm not going to get to today i will cover it tomorrow but i'm going to keep going with this video and i'm going to post it on youtube so if it asks you to list rational zeros and let's say we couldn't factor it, and let's say our final answer gave us something like this. This is an irrational zero, and I would not list it if it's only asking for rational. 
Now, if it asks you to list all zeros, then you would list all of these and anything with square roots and any answers that have an I in it. So the next example, number six, is gonna have a square root in it, and then examples seven and eight are gonna have imaginary solutions, and we will still list them. So this homework is due on Wednesday. However, I've covered enough of the examples so you can at least get started on the homework. And for those of you who want to complete it tonight, I will be posting the video working out examples six, seven, and eight. However, I will do them in class tomorrow, so it's not mandatory for you to watch the video. Okay, so let's move on to number six, and we're gonna actually encounter our first irrational zero. Because once we do the synthetic division, we're gonna find that the quadratic equation or function cannot be factored. So again, let's first list the possible zeros. This one's nice, it doesn't have very many. So again, remember, for the possible zeros, we're listing the factors of the last term, which is plus and minus one, and plus and minus five, because one times five will give me five. And then the first term is just one. So my possible zeros, there's just four of them for me to test out. So really, I don't even need to do Desmos here. I could easily check negative one, positive one, negative five, and positive five with no problem. Now, this again, this list is only possible zeros. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a synthetic division problem and I'm gonna test out the number one. So I'm gonna key in my coefficients now notice this one, remember we need to hold a place for everything, it's missing the x term, so I need to hold a place with a zero. So I'm gonna key in one, four, zero, and negative five. I'm gonna bring down this first coefficient, I'm gonna multiply, I'm gonna add the column, I'm gonna multiply, add the column, multiply, add the column. Notice Without even king it in Desmos, I got lucky, I guessed, I got one of my zeros, and now I can take and add in remainder, constant, x, x squared. So x squared plus five x plus five equals zero. Now, notice there aren't any factors of five that are gonna give me a five. So this is where quadratic formula comes into play. Now, on any of the previous examples I did, if you're not someone who likes to factor, then go ahead and do quadratic formula. So here, I'm gonna, um, my A is one, my B is five, and my C is five. So I'm using quadratic formula. So opposite of B or negative B, plus or minus B squared minus four times A times C, all under the square root divided by two times a. This is gonna give me negative five plus or minus 25 minus 20 divided by two. Negative five plus or minus the square root of five over two. These are my other two solutions. Remember, this was an x cubed, so I'm looking for three answers. My three solutions are the positive one that I divided by at the beginning, and then my next solution is negative five plus root five over two, and negative five minus root five over two. These are my three zeros. So if it says to list all zeros, these the one is rational, and then the other two are irrational. These are all zeros, you would list them all. Let's try another one. The next one is actually gonna have an imaginary solution or imaginary zero. I'm still listing it, it is a zero. Okay, so again, these are the solutions or the zeros. If they ask you to find the factors, the factors here would have been x minus one 
And because this one couldn't be factored, I would just leave it like this, x squared plus 5x plus 5. So these are the factors, but these are the zeros. Let's go ahead and do example number 7. So again, I'm going to list my possible zeros. What's nice here is it's not very many. So possible zeros. We're going to do the last, which are plus and minus 1, plus and minus 3, over the first, which is plus and minus 1. So my only zeros that I need to possibly check are negative 1, positive 1, negative 3, positive 3. Now keep in mind that there still could be irrational or even imaginary solutions. So potentially, even though we're looking for three zeros here, um, some of them may be imaginary or irrational. So let me go ahead and key this in, or actually I'm going to do synthetic division, and I'm going to use positive 1 to try to divide to see if it's a solution. Also realize that you're missing the x squared term, so don't forget to hold the place with a 0. So it's 0, I mean 1, 0, 2, negative 3. Bring down the 1, multiply, add the column, multiply, add the column, multiply, add the column. So my solution or my equation now, remainder, constant, x, x squared. So now I have x squared plus x plus 3 equals 0. And again, you can see that this cannot be factored. So, um, and I, so I'd have to use the quadratic formula. So the two factors are x minus 1 and x squared plus x plus 3 equals 0. These are the factors, but because this trinomial cannot be factored to get the 0, what I need to do is quadratic formula. So opposite of b, so my a is 1, my b is 1, and my c is 3. So opposite of b would be negative 1 plus or minus b squared minus 4 times a times c, that's all under the radical, over 2 times a. So let me go ahead and multiply or multiply and add or subtract what's under the radical. This gives me 1 minus 12 over 2, negative 1 plus or minus negative 11. And then here, when I try to simplify that negative 11, it turns into i square root of 11. So my three solutions here, because again, remember it was an x cubed, are x equals positive 1, x equals negative 1 plus i radical 11 over 2, and negative 1 plus, I'm sorry, minus, I did the plus, minus i radical 11 over 2. These are the three solutions here. Two of them are imaginary. Let's try the last one. Kind of big here. So again, let's list the possible zeros. So possible zeros. Again, you're going to take the last term, which is 8. So plus and minus 1, plus and minus 2, plus and minus 4, plus and minus 8, all over the factors of the first term, which is just 1. So my possible zeros here are just going to be 1, plus and minus 1, plus and minus 2, plus and minus 4, and plus and minus 8. So this one is to the fifth power. I'm looking for five solutions. So let's go ahead, and I could either key it into Desmos, find two of the rational zeros that I can do synthetic division with because I need to try to get it down to a factorable form. So let me go ahead and I know that one of them, one of my zeros is a one. Um, I went ahead and keyed it into Desmos and I saw that it hit the x-axis at positive one. So let me go ahead and put my coefficients back in here. It's missing an x to the fourth, so make sure you leave a place. So right in here, it should be 0x to the 4th to hold the spot. So 0, so 1, 0, 1, 2, negative 12, positive 8. 
bring down, multiply, add the column, multiply, add the column, multiply, add the column, multiply, add the column, multiply, add the column. I got a remainder of zero. So now remainder, constant, x, x squared, x cubed, x to the fourth. I need to do it again because this is not something that I can factor yet. So 2x squared plus 4x minus 8. I can't factor by grouping, so again, I'm going to do another synthetic division using another one of these possible zeros. And the number I'm going to choose is negative 2 this time. And I'm using this bottom row here. So 1, 1, 2, 4, negative 8. Bring down, multiply, add the column, multiply, add the column, multiply, add the column, multiply. Remainder 0. Again, I guessed a number out of this list and it worked. I got a remainder of 0. If you would have chosen positive 2, it wouldn't work and then you'd have to try again. So I found two of the answers so far. Now let's go ahead and add back the variables, remainder, constant, x, x squared, x cubed. So let's go ahead and write this down. So x cubed minus x squared plus four x minus four. Now at this point, I could either try to find another rational zero it actually, one actually works again. It actually occurs twice. However, I could actually factor this four term polynomial by grouping. And that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna group these two. I'm gonna group these two. So your goal here is to break down the polynomial into something that can be factored. Usually what we do is get it down to quadratic. But this time I actually got it down to a four term polynomial that I could factor by grouping. So the GCF of this first group is gonna be x squared. And let me do this one in green, actually yellow, so it shows up better. Then my GCF of this group is gonna be four. Take the two that are like, put them together, or right at once rather. So the x minus one gets written once, and then you take the two GCFs. So now these are the other factors. So in factored form, I've got the X minus one, that was the first synthetic. Then the next synthetic is X plus two. And then I have this one and this one. So now what's gonna happen here is Notice this one's an x squared. I'm looking for five answers. I've only got four factors written here, but this one here with the x squared is gonna account for two of them. So let's go ahead and solve each of these. So x minus one equals zero, add one. x equals one. Oops, let me go ahead and write it out. x plus two equals zero, subtract two x equals negative 2, and then here, add 4, x squared equals 4, actually this should be a plus 4, this should be a plus, so I'm minusing 4 here, let me fix this, This is x squared plus 4, subtract 4. When I square root this, I get x equals plus and minus 2i. And then the last one, I know I already solved for 1. So notice here, my five solutions are x equals 1. This occurs twice. And this is gonna lead into what we're gonna be covering from section 3.2. When you have an answer that occurs two times, so x equals one occurred twice. We're gonna learn something later on coming up and it's called multiplicity. 
this has a multiplicity of two because the zero x equals one occurs twice. And when this is graphed, it's gonna look like a bounce or a touch and turn. And I'm gonna actually key this into Desmos and show you what the graph actually looks like. My next solution is negative two. And then I have another one at two i. And then the last one is at negative two i. So I've got two imaginary solutions and two rational solutions, but the x equals one occurs twice. So these are my five zeros. When you're keying it in, you don't need to enter x equals one twice. You'll just enter it once. But let me go ahead and show you what the graph looks like. Okay, so here I've um, imported the graph. So you can see that it's hitting here at negative two. And notice where it touches the graph at x equals one. Notice the graph comes in and it hits it, but then it doesn't cross the x-axis. It touches it and then it bounces away. So this is what we're gonna be covering because we're gonna be graphing these. So when one of your zeros occurs twice, it's like it comes into the x-axis, it touches it and then it turns away or almost like a bounce. So when a zero occurs twice, it won't cross through the x-axis. It'll touch it and then turn away. And we're gonna be seeing this coming up. Notice the two imaginary solutions, the x equals two i and negative two i. We don't, we're not expected to graph those. But if it asks you to list all possible z or list all of the zeros, you would still list them. You just wouldn't be responsible for graphing imaginary solutions in this class. You would do that in a later course. So that is it for the notes on section three, four. Um, and then we're gonna go on to cover, we're gonna go back to 3.2 and we're gonna incorporate um, 3.2's lesson when we graph these polynomials next.